Mabuhai, this is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. Today's video is about some things a good guy won't do to the woman he loves. So I'm going to talk about how a man loves a woman. I married a woman in the Philippines in 2015, so my videos are about how to treat her, how to get along, how to handle certain situations so you stay together. That's one place you can still find a good wife in the Philippines, so I appreciate you subscribing here. And leave comments about this topic. Here is, I'm going to read from an author. That her name is Heather Hans. This is from uh, just a couple of months ago. And it's on yourtango.com. Ten things a guy won't do to the woman he loves. And I will interject my thoughts as well. And I hope you will too. Number one, ten things you won't do. He puts destructive habits before you. You see, he's not going to do that. They say addiction blocks a person's ability to love, period. If the addiction is to substances, their love is even further diminished because it alters their mental and physical states. Very few things in life are guaranteed, but you cannot ever be deeply loved by a person with addiction because they will always put their object of addiction before you. Addiction is inherently narcissistic and self-destructive. <coughs> the thing here, this is me, if, if they're already married, then yeah, somehow they you have to help them through that or help them to get the help through the addiction. Um, because just like I said in another video, falling out of love is not a reason for divorce and uh, addiction isn't either. That's just my commentary. Back to the article. Number two, things he won't do to the woman he loves threaten her physically, emotionally, or verbally. This one seems obvious, but those of us who have been threatened and or abused know the insidious power of the abusive cycle. Not only does it lower your self-worth, but chemically, the lows that come with abuse are so severe that the feel-good oxytocin released into the bloodstream um, when the abuser loves you, so to speak, again, becomes addictive to you. Real love is grounded, it's trustworthy, it's stable. Number three, he pressures you to do things for him that you don't feel comfortable doing. Now, the man is the head of the wife, he is the leader, I think the CEO of the marriage, but that does not give him the right to be pressuring his wife to do things she's not comfortable with, especially if it's going to break the law, be harmful. Um, from the article, a classic sign of self-centeredness is a person who pressures you into doing things for him that you're not comfortable doing and has no regard for you. You are an object to him to be used for his own power source. If you're an empath and giver by nature, you must especially watch out for this trap. You feel good by giving. He feels good by taking. It's the perfect storm that leads to destruction and classic dysfunctional relationships. It has nothing to do with love, everything to do with low self-worth and a search for identity through another person. Number four, he repeatedly fails to keep his word or lies to you. Good husband doesn't do that. And they say, um, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz brought the importance of this reality to light. It's been said that it's better to live in a tent if you must than to live in a mansion with a man you can't trust. Your romantic relationships is one of the most intimate relationships in your life, and what allows it to be intimate is trust. Without trust, there is no relationship. Trust is very foundational for your relational home. If he does not keep his word, you are not safe with him. Number five, he ignores or neglects you. Someone who really loves you knows how special you are. He shows you care and attention because he truly cherishes you. People who are neglectful are not available for love to themselves or anyone else. Number six, he speaks in a manner that is rude, crude, or disrespectful. You need the person you're with to be a real mensch. That's Yiddish for a person of integrity and honor. Someone who speaks rudely in general and especially in your presence does not honor you, themselves, or anyone else. We treat people, excuse me, we teach people how to treat us. Putting up with disrespectful talk 
tells them that their words are acceptable. Even something as common as a man using the word girl to describe a grown woman is patronizing, demeaning, and sexually twisted, although I don't quite agree with them there. We don't call grown men boys because it would, it would insult their maturity and masculinity. I disagree with that also. I don't think men care if you call them boys. Who cares? When you have an unpleasant bodily reaction to the words someone uses, there's usually a very good reason for it. It's because they are unloving. Number seven, he shows or acts on an interest in pursuing other women. It's healthy, normal, natural to feel attracted to other people, you know, whether or not you're in a relationship. Acting on this attraction, though, is something different altogether. Commitment is a sign of love and devotion. If someone is not committed to you, then they don't really love you. If you have a sick child, you are required to take time off of work and self-interest in order to care for that child. Abandon your parental duties because other things are more appealing to you would mean that you tr truly don't love your child. The same is true in romance. Number eight, he acts like your needs are a burden or inconvenience in his life. One of the most self-oppressive things you can do in relationships is to pretend that you don't have any needs. We all have a need to be loved, appreciated, and cared for on an emotional and physical level. If you suffered neglect or abuse as a child, then you likely subconsciously believe that you are a burden. But it's not true. You deserve a mate who is capable of treating you like a precious gem worthy of the best. Number nine, he criticizes, disparages, and belittles you. Um, very true. Sometimes, this is me interjecting, sometimes the people we criticize the most or speak rudely to the most of the people in our own family, and it could be you know, your own wife, could be your own children, and that's probably not the way it should be. I would say that while we want to be open and intimate and transparent with your with your spouse and, and even let them know you're upset, that's still not a reason for you know name calling and criticism and disparagement. Number 10 here to wrap it up from this article. He makes it all about him, constantly demanding your time, energy, and attention. A healthy, loving partner appreciates your love, but does not demand it for his own ego gratification. Anything that's imbalanced, including relationships, is subject to disease. Relationships are a two-way street about each person sharing with each other. You'll have an intuitive sense when someone is sucking your energy. Pay attention to that inner knowing because it will only get worse. And if you've noticed these signs, that's the end of the article. And, you know, this is not somebody you want to date. If you're not married to them yet and they're doing things like this, um, really no reason to think it's going to get better because they, they are not committed and um, they're not yet ready to love. And I talk about a lot, a lot about that here on Love Beyond the Sea because, you know, we should know what the word means. And so I've been making some videos about that in a playlist called Love from a source called gotquestions.org. We can learn all about different aspects of love that definitely are going to come into play when you are married. Uh, and just like I am with my Love Beyond the Sea.